What's up guys, welcome to A Reseller's Life. My name is Chris, thank you so much for joining me. In today's episode, I wanna talk about why my sales are down, but four reasons why I'm not worried about it. I'm actually feeling fine, even though my sales are down almost 50% today for no apparent reason. So if you look at eBay, you know, if you look at my graph, I've never had two days in a row that are identical, okay? Every day it goes up and down, up and down. By definition, I've literally never had two days with the same number of sales. So I understand that all you have to do is stay the course, okay? That's why I'm not worried about it. My goal is to sell 200 items per day. Why did I pick that goal? Because that's the average number of cups of coffee that a successful coffee shop sells per day. Why can't I aspire to sell the same number of coffee cups as the average coffee shop? I can do that. In fact, I have millions of customers online and a coffee shop is limited mainly to the two miles of people around it, okay? I don't have that, I have the entire globe. I should be able to pull off 200 sales a day the reason why I have that goal too is it's exciting. At 200 sales a day, my income, my monthly income would be more than my annual bills. Okay, that's really, that's cool to me. I like that idea of potentially you could work for 10 years and pay for 100 years of living. That's kind of cool, right? That's something that you can get up in the morning and be actually pretty jazzed about. You know, some people are like, I wish I could just get by. I used to have that mentality too. You know, I worked for... Um, somebody I didn't like and every day you're just thinking to yourself how can I how can I not be here right and I think that a lot of people use that dislike of their job or dislike of their boss to to motivate themselves to create a change right so as as some people would say when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired you start to get energy to build some endeavor that's exciting to get you out of bed. So the first reason, again, that I'm not worried about it is because I know that if you stay the course, every single model works, okay? Everything, all models work as long as you work and you focus. If you can't focus, no models work, okay? So for me, in my store, today I listed 170 new items all of them are common, and yet I had my worst day in 90 days, even though I listed the most items I have in 90 days. But I'm not worried about it because if you look at the general trend, even in the last week or so, it's up. Even though I had the worst day in 90 days today, this last week, I'm still up. So overall, when you look at your sales, don't worry about one day or one week. You're not doing business just this one day or one week. If you are on a plan to become more healthy, don't think about what you ate today. Think about what you ate the entire year. And I can tell you one thing for sure. There is no life worth living that doesn't include baked goods. Okay, if you're not having a donut once in a while or a croissant or a bun that's warmed up with a cup of coffee or tea, you are missing like probably the best part of life. I can't think of anything more enjoyable then sitting down with somebody over a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or just hot water or a glass of water or orange juice or beer or whatever you drink and having french fries or um, a croissant with someone and just sharing what you've been up to, okay? Do that, but earn it, okay? Have something to actually share with the other person. That's cool, that's motivating, that's inspiring. Do enough for yourself that you're spilling over with abundance for other people. Okay, we could use that in our country right now. Just try to make more than just getting by for yourself. Pick a goal that's actually exciting, that will get you out of bed, that gets everybody else out of bed. I've been running this group with Tech and Sports. He, he lists a, he's been listing 250 items every single day, and he posts his, um, he posts his numbers in the group. Here we have Jeff with $81,000 this month on Amazon. These are numbers that are outrageous, but the thing is, when you hear these numbers, when you see people posting, 200, he has 291 drafts ready for the weekend. It makes you realize there's people out there that are building massive empires, and it could be you. And here's the most important part. Usually, excuse me, people that are building amazing empires are just selling common items, okay? It's impossible to find 250 amazing items every single day. That's not how this works, 
They've just found a specific niche. They found a supplier. They're, they're listing similar items, and that's how they're able to achieve that kind of efficiency. You know, one chain I really like is called In and Out. It's in California. They only have they only serve three things. They serve one burger. They serve a grilled cheese, which is not a grilled cheese. It's just a cheeseburger with no beef, right? They have a milkshake. They have uh, um, either a milkshake with real ice cream or a soda, and they have fries. That's pretty much it. That's ninety five percent of the menu. My friend told me that when you work there, you should be able to go out onto the front line and help customers your very first day. Does, does that sound complicated to you? Imagine, okay, if you were just one person and you wanted to, to serve the menu that the Cheesecake Factory has. Have you guys ever been in the Cheesecake Factory? Their menu is like an encyclopedia. There's like 400 things that you could order. How could you do that as a solopreneur? Okay. I'm just running this business essentially by myself with some independent contractors. How could I cook 200 different things on the menu if I was a restaurant? The answer is I couldn't. So why am, are so many people, including myself, why do we think we can sell every category in our store? You can't. You can't list everything in your store because there's not enough time in, in eternity for you to learn all those categories. For me to double my sales, it's, you know, where I want to be is I want to be at $100,000 a month in sales. And normally I'm between 40 and 50. So I need to minimum double my productivity. To get there, what I have to do is niche down. As odd as it sounds, I have to sell less kinds of things in order to sell twice as many things, right? So it just feels weird because you start getting rid of things that are good and replacing them with things that are great. Okay, I asked the people in my store what categories are doing well. Everyone knows what categories are doing well in my store that works here. It's the ones that are being shipped out the most. Buy more of those, buy less of the things that aren't being shipped out as much, and it depends on your specific store. One thing I find that's really crazy, I have about 11,000 items in my store. Tekken Sports has 29,000 items in a store. We are in different categories, but we're still in the clothing section, which I think is pretty fascinating. Another interesting thing that I've been trying to do, and this is one of the reasons why I'm not worried, is I'm actually trying auctions. Um, I've never done it before, so I'm probably going to start incorporating auctions every single day into my store. Um, that way I can just have some continuous cash flow, and that's nice. I can plug that back into my employees, back into new inventory, and it's nice giving my customers a good deal. Right now I have 3,877 people who follow my store. I think most of those people are people who are... Um, looking to try to copy what I do. If you want to copy what I do, go for it. You can go and do my feedback left for others and you can see the 13,444 items I've sold this year so far uh, in the last calendar year rather. Hop in, look at all those different items if you want to see what I've sold. And I have made a lot of improvements. So in the last month, 722 feedback, positive, no negative, no neutral. I've been working hard on that. I have the lowest item not as described I've ever had before. It's 0.43. You can go into your hub. Um, I'm going to pull this up for you guys because I know if you stay the course, the results will be good. So check this out. I've actually never been low before. Um, I'm always in the average or high section. And, you know, a couple years ago, I was ready to jump on the class action lawsuit and try to sue eBay because I had $5,000 in penalties for being in the very high section. Um, the penalty I had was more than my mortgage. So it was like, I couldn't even believe the penalty. At that time, it was only 4%. Now it's 5% if you fall into the very high section. So I've never been this low. Okay, and I've never listed this much. So I now have a, the largest store I've ever had with the least defects I've ever had. And I think that that's a tremendous testament to me just doing my best to improve everything around me, surround myself with people who are doing the same thing. You know, Tech and Sports is having record months. You know, Ashley Hustle at Home Mom is a new coach of ours. She had a record month this month. I don't think it's any surprise because she's been in this group, which now has 267 people. Um, you can join at patreon.com slash 
the Resellers Podcast, which is the podcast Tech and Sports and I have been doing. We have a new show that comes out every single Friday, and he's Mr. Consistency. We haven't missed a week in the last 18 weeks. Okay, so it really just comes down to being consistent, delivering a consistent good. This is probably the coolest thing that's ever happened to me, honestly. I've never, ever been in the green section here. This never happened. I sell used goods. The odds of an item not as described being opened against me is quite high, in my opinion, um, at, at this volume, right? Because at 50 to 100 items going into the store a day, the chances that less than half a percent of those, a customer opens an item not as described, it's pretty amazing. In fact, um, most of my, I actually don't know how to solve this, so maybe put in the comment section below something to help me solve this. Most of my returns are because it's too small. So I don't, I don't know how to fix that um, other than maybe saying to the customer here, I'll, I'll share this with you guys. I don't know what you guys think of this, um, this listing that I did, but I want to share it with you guys because uh, you know, it's just something that I tried and it, it, seemed, to, it seemed to work. So let's go to the item title here, um, Taylor Stitch. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys the, uh, okay. So this shirt sold it for about 50 bucks. It's a flannel shirt. And um, this is like the best I can list, okay? The photos, these are, these are pretty much as good as I can take the photos. Um, it looks amazing. Everything is straight. I, I took a picture. Uh, the only thing I could have done maybe is worn white gloves instead of using my fingers, or maybe I could could have gotten a manicure before I took the pictures. But this is like as good as it gets. Best title I could do. Best pictures I could do. And in the description, I wrote like I really described the item. Selling an amazing button-down shirt from Taylor Stitch in a plaid check fabric, size 38, small. So I let the customer know that their sizing is a little weird, it's European. So I put in the American equivalent, which is small. Some seriously cool textured fabric. This shirt looks insanely cool in person. Got this from their workshop earlier in the year. It is now sold out. I looked up the item to find out the relevance of it. Excellent condition, only got to wear it a handful of times because I got too fat to fit into it. No stains, gently worn for one season, all completely subjective stuff, but the shirt was actually in excellent condition. But it's not true that um, I wore it a few times and then became too fat to fit in it because I'm a size large. I just thought I'm tired of getting returns for people saying it's too small when I provide the measurements. Right? So I'm trying my best to prevent the return. I have free returns, but I just put in here, I got too fat to fit into it, trying to maybe trigger people to look at the measurements that I provide. And hopefully that actually matches something that you're wearing so you don't have to return my item. So I don't know, guys, I'm doing a lot. I feel like I'm doing everything to make my store work and it's, it's going to pay off. I'm not worried about it. You should do the same. When you're so focused on making your store work, eventually it will. I can tell you that over time, when the dust settles, if you put the work into it, eBay will pay you back. So I appreciate your time. I'm not getting paid by them to say that. I just believe it because I've been doing it for a long time. I appreciate your time. I'll see you guys next time. Make progress daily. Smash the like button. Join our Facebook group. See ya.